Good morning. I am Audible, right? Okay, fine. Thank you. Join, we can start. Hmm. At the last class, uh, where up to where did we do? Softening processes, right? I told you to write the uh, temporary hardness and permanent hardness. Three steps are there. Three uh, processes are there. Okay, you need to go in brief uh, uh, in details. So you can just write down the chemical equations and you can remember. Okay, so uh, I won't go in much details about this methods. Okay, processes because these are too long. Uh, only if you do, you remember the names, okay, and uh, also you try to remember the chemical equations if possible, okay. If possible, try to remember the chemical equations. The names are important, okay. Like somebody may ask you what are the process uh, or the treatment process for uh, your the removing the permanent hardness or for removing temporary hardness like that. Somebody may ask you. So, in that case, you need to uh, tell the names. Okay, so uh, as far uh, this uh, may uh, it to go in details, uh, you should know what uh, chemicals are being used in each process. Okay, so that much if you know, then it's sufficient. Okay, so uh, next uh, I would like to uh, discuss here. In short, this one I have told you to write down the five. Uh, Differences between lime soda process and zeolite process. Okay, so here uh, this uh, PDF I shared or not, I didn't remember, but uh, if I didn't share, then I will share it by today if uh, uh, it's not shared. Okay, then um, you write down here, uh, you can see 12 differences are given based on each items. Okay. Uh, lime soda process and zeolite process. So you can write down any five or six points, uh, taking the easy, easy points from here. Okay, it's upon you, whatever uh, points you take. Okay, then after your uh, softening has been done, okay, so after you have done the softening process, your hard water also you have converted to your, uh, you have removed the hardness from the water and uh, after giving all the treatment processes, okay, now uh, the water is very much clear, okay, the water is very much purified, uh, but then also, you know, uh, certain minerals, uh, uh, you know, like iron, manganese and some of the uh, dissolved gases, you can say like carbon dioxide or hydrogen sulfide gas or chlorine or uh, these things, it might, you know, it might remain in the water uh, after the normal treatment processes also, okay, because for water softening also you are adding some chemicals for chlorine also you are, uh, for uh, this one, uh, chlorination you are adding chlorines, okay, for all those uh, reasons somewhere, uh, you know, um, there might be some of the chemicals that left behind, some of the minerals that left behind, okay. And then what happens, the, those minerals or those uh, dissolved gases, they impart some 
uh, you know taste a uh, bad taste or, or some little bit odor or color in the water okay so for that reason you know some uh, special treatments are also done the water okay some special treatments are given uh, like uh, you see here uh, your one treatment uh, to remove the uh, color odor and taste okay uh, to remove the color odor and taste your aeration is done okay you will remember the name aeration okay so from the name itself your aeration you can uh, know that something it is related to air okay something is related to oxygen so what it is done in this process the water it is uh, what it is brought in contact with what oxygen okay so that the water can absorb the oxygen and it can remove the carbon dioxide gas from the water okay so uh, there are you no know, different processes uh, by which aeration can be done okay there are uh, many processes so uh, basically uh, here by aeration uh, it helps in removing the hydrogen sulfide gas okay the hydrogen sulfide gas is what uh, the gas you know uh, that of a rotten egg you can uh, smell the uh, the rotten egg smell so that is a hydrogen sulfide gas okay so it's a very bad uh, smell and uh, the also the iron and manganese it can be also removed up to a certain extent okay so what are the processes number one is your by using spray nozzles okay by using spray nozzles like uh, there are you know special uh, nozzles okay small small nozzles are there so those are you know um, what happens the water it is going through the nozzles and it is coming out of sorry coming out of the nozzles and it uh, it is faced upon the atmosphere okay it is faced to the atmosphere and the water it uh, comes out and it converts into droplets okay so by using your uh, spray nozzles also your uh, aeration process is done like uh, the water it is given oxygen and by that process also carbon dioxide gas it is removed okay and you can say 90 percent carbon dioxide can be removed by this uh, uh, method of using spray nozzles okay so basically uh, the, the more uh, you can say that uh, used okay the more mostly used uh, is your number second one that is your uh, cascades okay so if you go to a water treatment plant you can see this type of structure okay this type of structure you can see uh, here also in Guwahati also if you go or in other treatment plants also if you go you can see this uh, one uh, this type of structure where aeration is done okay by this uh, this one here you know basically these are steps okay this one this one this one okay there are certain steps and the water is allowed to flow okay the allow it is allowed to you know uh, go through these steps okay so uh, what happens uh, by, like if you see here that uh, the water it is made to fall to a certain height like one to three meter okay the steps are one uh, about one to three meter width okay so what happens the water falls to the steps okay and that is known as your free fall aerator the, uh, the process it is known as your or uh, the structure you can say it is known as your free fall aerator and the simplest type of uh, your free fall aerator is known as what cascade aerator okay cascade aerator here you can see cascade aerator okay so uh, by this process also your carbon dioxide gas is removed and the oxygen it is supplied to the water okay so uh, like this you know some uh, treatments are uh, these are miscellaneous treatments you can say so those are given to the water for removing your uh, little little things okay like uh, there are many other processes also like removing fluoridation and all, all those things are also there but uh, i have not included okay because those are uh, many processes are there small small process many are there okay so uh, basically try to remember uh, the normal treatment processes which uh, we have discussed uh, till uh, last class or today also you can say for up to water softening okay water up to water softening it is very important and aeration is also important okay so uh, with this uh, we, we end our treatment process chapter okay
I am uh, telling it as a chapter, okay? The district pen process chapter. We are uh, ending it today. So after this, uh, one of uh, this topic is left, like your for your first module. One topic is left that is your distribution system. Okay. So you see, uh, this is your distribution system. So uh, what? It comes under here is that uh, after you know the, treat, the water it has been uh, uh, treated okay after you have treated the water okay you have removed everything now the water is completely purified okay so after the water it has been completely purified and it has been treated and made safe okay so now the water it need to be supplied to the uh, consumers isn't it obviously it need to be supplied to the consumers and you need you need you uh, I need to have that water in your homes. Okay, so how it is done? It is done through a distribution system. Okay, so what a distribution system does? It takes the water from the treatment plant. Okay, and then it is it supplies your to your individual houses. Okay, so uh, you know in a distribution system there are many things. Okay, a distribution system it combines of many things like it consists of you can say pipelines. Okay. It has pipelines, then it has hydrants. Okay, hydrants means you know it, it is uh, used for providing connections with the water mains. Okay, and uh, then you have meters. Okay, meters you know for measuring the for the discharge. Okay, then you have uh, service connections to your individual homes. Then pumps also you need. Okay, so all these things are included in a distribution system. Clear? So this uh, this is as a whole a distribution system. So now we will see what are the requirements of a good distribution system. Okay. So uh, for a good distribution system, it is said that number one point you see, uh, it should be capable of supplying water at all intended places within the city with a reasonably sufficient pressure head. Okay. So that means a good distribution system. It should be able to supply the water at all places. It is not like that. It will supply only here. It will not supply not there. It is not like that. Okay. It should be able to supply the water at all places, and that also with what uh, the sufficient pressure head. That means much pressure is not needed. Okay. So uh, for if pressure is needed, that means we need to provide pump. Okay. So that uh, it is it uh, it the water is supplied through gravity. Okay. So uh, the number second point you see, it should be capable capable of supplying the requisite amount of water for firefighting during such needs. Okay. So if in some places, uh, any fire breaks out, okay, during emergency uh, services, so the uh, water uh, a good distribution system, it should be capable of uh, supplying the uh, proper amount of water, okay, during emergency needs. Then number three is your. It should be cheap uh, with the least capi uh, capital construction cost. Okay, so the economy and the cost of installing the distribution system is a very important factor because the distribution system is the most costly uh, item in the entire water supply scheme. Okay, so uh, it should be obviously a distribution system. It is the most costly item in the entire water supply or water treatment plant. Okay. So, uh, a good distribution system is the one which is uh, very cheap and with the uh, construction, least capital construction cost. Okay. So, number four uh, is uh, it should be simple and easy to operate and repair. Obviously, it should be, you know, uh, it should be easy to, it should be easy to operate and also for repairing purpose also, it should be uh, your uh, simple. Okay. Then also uh, the distribution system, it should be uh, safe uh, against any future pollution of water. If some if future for the water is polluted or the, uh, the water is polluted also later, the distribution system, it should be safe. It should not get for uh, uh, this one. Uh, the distribution system, it also remains safe. Okay. Uh, next is your, so these are the points of uh, the Requirements of a good distribution system. These are the points. These five points uh, you can note it down in your copy. Okay. A 
Acha. Next is your layouts. So uh, we have to know some of the layouts, like uh, uh, how a distribution uh, pipes are laid. Okay. So uh, below the below the road, okay, below the road, obviously you have seen uh, uh, in your place also here also that the pipes are laid below the ground, isn't it? So there are certain layouts, okay. They are just not laid oh, yeah, like uh, here and there, okay. So there is a certain layout. There is a certain you know method by which the uh, the distribution pipes it should be laid below the road pavements. Okay. So uh, we in that layout only the water will flow. Okay. So uh, there is there are four types of layouts of distribution system. Number one is your dead end system. Number two is your grid iron system. Number three is your ring system and number four is your radial system. This is important, okay? You should know the layouts of our distribution network. So, uh, what is a dead end system, you see? In the dead end system, okay, that it is also known as tree system, okay? So, uh, why it is known as a tree system? Because the layout, it looks like a tree, okay? So, what, uh, what uh, uh, it is there in a dead end system is that there is only one main supply pipe, okay? There is only one main supply pipe and from which, okay? From which, uh, in from that main pipe, your uh, different types of sub main pipes are, uh, uh, comes out, okay? So, from that main supply pipe, your sub main pipes are originated. Then again from each sub main, then what happens there again from there, your several branch pipes are originated. Okay. So like that it becomes a, uh, the structure it becomes like that of a tree. Okay. So uh, and this type of uh, layout it is adopted for your older towns. Okay. Like we have discussed arithmetic increase method and geometric increase method. Those are also, you know, some, some is for developing countries, some are for already developed countries like that here also. For your dead end system, this type of uh, layout it is, you know, adopted for what? For older towns, okay, which have, you know, already been developed, okay. Uh, so, there means already been developed and there are no proper planned roads, okay. So, in that type of uh, city or that type of towns, your dead end system is being used or dead end system of uh, layout is being adopted. Okay. So, uh, here, you know, every layout, uh, every layout, it has a certain disadvantage and advantages. Okay. Each layout has a certain advantage and disadvantage. So, let us see the advantages of a dead end system. But before that, let me show you the diagram of a uh, dead end system. So this is a diagram, okay? This is a diagram of a dead end system. You can see this line, the middle one, okay? Uh, the middle one, you see this line. It is your main supply pipe, okay? This line is your main supply pipe. Then from this main supply, your sub main pipes are coming, okay? These are sub main pipes, okay? These are sub main pipes, and from these sub main pipes, again your branches are coming. You see, these are branches. Okay, these are branches. So it, it is a kind of a tree. Okay, so it is known as a dead end system or also a, a your uh, tree system. Okay, so now let us see what are the advantages of a dead end system. So, number one is you see. The distribution network can be solved easily and it is possible to easily and accurately calculate the discharges and pressures at different points in the system. Obviously, this uh, structure you can see it is very much simple. Okay, It is very much simple. So, uh, the, this, the discharges, okay, the discharges, it can be calculated uh, easily and also the pressures also it can be uh, uh, measured easily okay so number two point for advantages you see lesser number of cutoff valves cutoff valves means what sluice valves okay uh, sluice valves are used to regulate the flow okay 
stress valves are uh, required to regulate the flow. So, in your dead end system, lesser number of stress valves are required in this system. Okay. So, shorter pipe lengths are needed and the laying of pipe is easier. That means shorter here, uh, not much length pipes are used. Okay. Only the main supply pipe is your uh, big one, then others are very short, short. Okay. So, and also it is cheap and simple and can be extended or expanded easily. Okay, so these four are your uh, advantages. So, now let us see what are the disadvantages. Okay, so you see here, in this method, water can reach a particular point only through one route. Any damage or repair in any pipeline will completely stop the water supply in the area being fed by that pipe. Okay, so see, yes, uh, here everything is related with the main pipe, okay. So from the main, main pipe only, your uh, sub-main pipe is coming up, then from the sub-main pipe, your branches are coming up, okay. So if by any how, by any chance, your main pipe is affected, okay, your main pipe is, uh, you know, it is damaged, okay. So what will happen? The uh, people residing in this area, okay, the people residing here, uh, the, the, the people, those are getting water from the submains or by the branches, okay. So, what will happen? They will also, those people will also be hampered, okay. They will also not get water because the only uh, supply of uh, the in dead end system, the main supply pipe, it is the most important, okay. The pipe, well, there is only one supply line. So, if that is affected, then all other people are affected, okay. So, there is no other way out that they will get water by different pipes, okay, because everything is connected to the main supply line. So, that is one very big disadvantage of your dead end system, okay. So, uh, you see here, uh, there are numerous dead ends in the system which prevent the free circulation of water. The, the stagnation of water may lead to the degradation in its quality. This stale water should therefore be removed periodically at all the dead ends by providing uh, scour valves at each dead end. Okay? This will result in a greater wastage of treated water and will necessitate careful attendance at each valve. So there are numerous dead ends. They are saying that there are numerous dead ends. That means this one. You see in this uh, in this diagram, these are called dead ends. Okay, these are closed. Okay, these are closed. So what uh, what happens if the water uh, it is coming like this and it is coming here? Okay, so here it seems the you know it is uh, closed. So the some water obviously it will remain here. Okay, it will not uh, it will not be uh, some re water remains due to its you know that ends so what happens to that water the that water becomes stale okay and what when a water it uh, becomes stale obviously it will be the water it will be degraded okay the quality of the water will be degraded okay so uh, they here it is told that you know by providing scour bulbs at each dead end that water uh, or the stale water it can be removed periodically Okay, so uh, this is the second uh, uh, disadvantage of your dead end system. And number three, you see, since in this system the discharge is reaching a point from only one uh, direction, the supplies during the fighting, firefighting cannot be increased by diverting any other supplies okay, uh, uh, from any other side. Hence, it gives them limited supplies and may sometimes prove to be a serious handicap. Okay, so it is also the same thing. Since the water is uh, coming from only one single pipe, okay, so uh, the, you know during your fire emergencies or emergencies during fire breakout, so uh, the discharge, the volume or the discharge, it cannot be increased, okay, by like you know uh, diverting the uh, the supplies from any other side, okay. So that is you know a disadvantage, okay. So, uh, so these three are the disadvantage and uh, four you have got the advantages, okay. So, you, uh, if uh, something related to this comes, then you need to draw the diagram, okay. 
you the diagram is important in this layout because you need to know what is uh, how the layout looks like okay so you need to see then next is your uh, grid iron system okay so this is a diagram you can see it is type of a grid okay so everything is a, in a square pattern it is a grid so you see what is written here uh this uh, in this system okay which is also known as an interlaced system or reticulation system so here the nails sub mains and branches are all interconnected with each other obviously you can see here this is the main pipe the middle one is a main pipe okay then again from here sub mains are going these are sub mains let me show you uh, you can see this is the main pipe okay main supply pipe then here from here the sub mains are coming out okay then again the branches you see these are branches okay so of everything here in a grid iron system everything are you know uh, interconnected okay so uh, you see uh, what it is written in fact in a well planned city or a town the roads are generally developed in a grid iron system obviously grid iron pattern and the pipelines in such places can follow them easily so in this system it is for a you know uh, developed uh, city or a developed town okay uh, then so what are the advantages you see the since the water reaches at different places through more than one route the discharge to be carried by each pipe the friction loss and the size of the pipe therefore gets reduced obviously since here you know uh, main pipe supply pipe branches everything are interconnected so uh, the discharges you know the discharges carried by uh, each of the pipe it uh, get, it gets reduced okay so in case of repairs very small area will be devoid of complete supply as at least some supply will be reaching at the point from some other route obviously like suppose uh, you you can see here suppose uh, here a person residing here uh, this pipe is affected okay this pipe is suppose damaged okay so obviously it is not like that the person person will not get water at all because the water it might come in this route also okay by this route also he may he may get or by any route by any route he he may get the water okay so it is not like that if one uh, pipeline it is damaged then he will be devoid of water completely okay so this is a advantage in a grid iron system so number 3 you see because of different interconnections the dead ends are completely eliminated and therefore water remains in continuous circulation and hence not liable to pollution due to stagnation obviously in a grid iron system you can see in this diagram that there are no dead ends like here in a tree system in a tree system you have seen that these are the dead ends so here the dead ends are not present and the water it is in a continuous uh, cup, uh, the, the circulation process and so there are no stagnated water okay so next uh, number 3 okay uh, and also during fire your uh, water or uh, more water can be diverted towards the affected point from various direction by closing and manipulating the various cutoff valves okay because uh, here uh, the since the water it, it it can be supplied from different directions okay so it is a, a great advantage during fire emergencies okay then what are the disadvantages you see this system requires more length of pipeline and a larger number of sluice valves okay obviously here the uh, length of the pipes are very uh, very very uh, long and since all are interconnected so that means a uh, you know greater sweep, uh, you know greater number or large number of sluice of valves are required okay and here the construction cost is also it is uh, very uh, high okay and the design uh, uh, it is also you know very difficult and it is also costlier uh, so uh, you know it is not that much you know economical Okay, this uh, system. So number three is your ring system. This is a ring system. You see, this one, this diagram. You can see it is a ring system. So uh, here you see this system. It is also sometimes known as your circular system. Okay. 
So in this system, a closed wing, either circular or rectangular of the main pipe is formed around the area to be served. Okay. The distribution area is divided into rectangular or circular blocks. The submains may be placed as well as shown. The ring system is very suitable for towns and cities having well-planned roads. Okay. Sometimes, okay. So here what it is done actually, the main pipe, okay. The main pipe you can see here. This is the main pipe, okay. It forms a uh, either a rectangle or a circle, okay. So this is a forming a loop. Sorry. Uh, so it is forming a loop, okay. As you can see from here to here. Again it is coming like this, okay. Again it is coming like this, okay. It is going like this. So it is a loop, okay. So here uh, and in between, in between the loop, okay. Uh, this is the distribution area. So it becomes a distribution area now. So here the branches or the submain pipes are also connected like that of a grid, uh, that of a grid iron system. Okay, so here uh, basically the I think the advantages, okay, advantages and uh, disadvantages, it will be the same as that of a grid iron system because this is a similar kind of the layout you can see is a similar kind of your uh, grid iron system. Okay, so uh, next is your last one. It is your radial system. Okay, so if a city or a town is having a system of radial roads emerging from different centers. The pipelines can be best laid in a radial uh, method by placing the distribution reservoir at these centers. In this system, water is therefore taken from the water mains and pumped into the distribution reservoirs placed at the different centers as shown in the figure. Okay, so here basically what happens, the layout is done in a radial system and the distribution reservoir, okay. The distribution reservoir is placed at the center of your uh, radial system. So here in this point, in this point, your distribution reservoirs are kept, okay. And from here, the waters are supplied radially, okay. It will go like this, okay. Then it will go in this direction, like this. Radially, it will go in this direction, then in this direction, this direction. Like that, it will go in a radial pattern. Okay, only the distribution reservoirs are kept at the center. Okay, so uh, here also your uh, advantages and disadvantages will be similar of that of your grid iron system. Okay, so this is all about your layouts. Okay, this is all about your layouts. Now there are uh, different methods for your know how to you know how you will distribute the water so there are certain methods okay so what are the methods you see number one is your gravitational method number two is your pumping method and number three is your combined gravity and pumping system okay so number uh, gravity gravitational system obviously you see here the water it is uh, you know, distributed from a high level source and the consumers are at a low level source okay so if the you know distribution system it is at a high level and the consumers are at a low level so that means uh, here the water can be distributed by the action of gravity okay and there is no pumps required for this purpose okay so uh, this method is known as your gravitational system okay so this is you see this is a gravitational system so this is a water uh, the distri uh, sub distribution reservoir it is at a higher level and here the consumers are somewhere here so if the water can flow through a uh, you know a means of gravitation okay so next is your number two is your pumping system okay so pumping system is just the reverse of your gravitation system so you see here in the diagram you will see so here it is a treatment plant is here okay this is a treatment plant, okay. Then your uh, consumers are living at a high level. Uh, are, they are living at a high level than your treatment plant, okay. Suppose the consumer is staying here, okay. So what will happen? Obviously, the water, it cannot be 
you know supplied uh, di- with the action of gravity because uh, the by the action of gravity the water can only go down okay or go below but here it is that just the reverse case so that means what will happen here if you um, connect the pump okay if you connect the pump with the treatment plant then uh, with the help of that pump the water it can be lifted to a, a certain height okay then after that the, wa- the water it can be supplied to the consumer okay so this is uh, all about of a pumping system so next is your number 3 is your combined gravity and pumping system so here actually what happens uh, you see here in this system the treated water is pumped at a constant rate and stored into an elevated distribution reservoir from where it is distributed to the consumers by the mere action of gravity sometimes the entire water is first of all pumped into the distribution reservoir and many a times it is pumped into the distribution mains and reservoirs uh, simultaneously so here basically uh, what happens you know in uh, places where you know there are low uh, low demand for you know demand periods like uh, there are water for only certain periods of a year so what happens in those places uh, the water it is first of all pumped to a uh, this is a pump house you can see just wait okay so basically what happens uh, here uh, the water it is uh, you know these are not uh, the all uh, seasons of a year the uh, water is not present okay so what happens whenever the water is uh, present in a high demand period so the water it is stored okay so how the water is stored this is a elevated reservoir you can see so the this is a leaf uh, this is a pump okay so the water is first of all uh, you know it is uh, uh, taken to a it is stored to a you know in a uh, distribution reservoir okay first it first of all it is a it is pumped and then after that it is supplied to the you know consumer so that means in this process your pump is also required and the gravitational system is also required okay so this is all about these three methods are all about your methods for distribution of water okay so these three methods here all these things you write down in your copy okay with proper diagram clear so with this uh, we end our you know first module Okay, we are ending our first module. From next class, we will uh, deal into your second module and third, fourth, and fifth module. Those are not very lengthy, so we will try to cover up quickly uh, three, four, and five modules in two, three classes. Okay, we will finish it. But uh, second module, I will need time. Okay, so for that, for next class, uh, from next class, we will be dealing with the uh, second module that is about sewage. Okay, so this is all about your raw water engineer clear okay so uh give your attendance and take your attendance wait roll number 69 From fifty one to sixty, who is present? Fifty two, ma'am. Fifty present, ma'am. Fifty two, then. Fifty one, ma'am. Okay, then. Fifty nine. Fifty nine. Who else? Fifty nine. Fifty nine. Okay. Fifty nine, ma'am. Okay, fifty nine. Then sixty. Not present. Okay. From sixty one to seventy, who is present? One by one, please. One by one, please. Sixty-seven, ma'am. Sixty-seven. Okay. Seven. Then. Sixty-eight. Okay. Sixty-eight. Okay. Ma'am, sixty-two. Sixty-two. Okay. Then. Ma'am, sixty-six. Sixty-six. Okay. Then. Sixty-one to seventy. Who is present in between? Anyone else? Sixty-one, ma'am. Sixty-one. Okay, Arif Khan. Okay. Okay. Sixty-one, sixty-two, sixty-six, sixty-seven, sixty-eight. Okay. Okay. From seventy-one to eighty, who is present? 